PayPal's stock is down 76% from its peak almost two years ago and down 27% from its 52 week high. And it seems almost any value investor that I know is bullish on the stock, claiming that PayPal is the greatest opportunity in the stock market since Meta shares trade below $100 a share last year. And we all know how that stock has performed ever since. So is PayPal really an attractive long-term investment going forward? On this video, I'll give you a brief overview of the investment case, quote the PayPal investment pitch from a recent hedge fund letter and share a brief valuation model to highlight what expectations are already priced into the stock. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so in the intro, we've just highlighted that PayPal stock has performed pretty badly, pretty poorly over the last one or two years. And it's now trading at a significantly lower price than in the past. However, the fact that PayPal, or any stock for that matter, is trading significantly below a historical price doesn't tell you anything about whether the stock is intrinsically cheap and whether you're looking at an attractive investment case. So what does PayPal actually do? Well, PayPal is one of the largest online payment companies and is the global leader in digital wallets, excluding China, as highlighted by this chart from PayPal's investor relations. The company offers services on both sides of the transaction, meaning that PayPal helps to make the purchasing process for both consumers easier, but also for merchants, as PayPal is basically acting as a payment gateway. And if you're wondering what the hell a payment gateway is, well, the payment gateways are a merchant service that processes credit cards. In a way, they can be thought of as the metaphorical cash register in an electronic transaction. However, like any cash register, it needs to be secure and convenient and merchants pay a transaction fee to PayPal for their services. And if we look at what PayPal's revenue is made up of, we can see that more than 90% of PayPal's revenue can be attributed to transaction revenues. And the fee structure may be a little more complex, but overall payments business model is relatively simple. When there's an online transaction that takes place with the help of PayPal, PayPal usually takes a cut. So PayPal has two levers to grow going forward. First of all, they can grow the number of active accounts using PayPal. And second of all, they can grow the transactions that they process. This is sometimes referred to as the total payment volume. Now the payment ecosystem as a whole, in my view, can be incredibly difficult to understand at first. And it is a very complex system. But if you want to invest in PayPal, I think you absolutely need to understand this ecosystem. And the quarter app Twitter account has actually done a fabulous job visualizing how the different players in that system are interconnected. Now over time, PayPal has expanded its services both organically, but also through acquisitions, venturing into various financial offerings such as business and consumer lending, remittances, fraud prevention, data management, card payments, and much more. And among its most successful products are Venmo, which appeals to a younger audience with its social network aspect and brain tree. So why is PayPal's stock down so much in recent months and yeah, years? Well, investors hate uncertainty and a few things about PayPal's future are very uncertain. First of all, the company is on the lookout for a new CEO, a position that obviously plays a critical role when it comes to creating shareholder value going forward. Secondly, there are worries about FedNow, which is an instant payment service developed by the Federal Reserve. Thirdly, revenue growth slowed in recent quarters and the e-commerce space as a whole was lapping the boom pandemic years, which made more recent results look maybe a little more disappointing. PayPal's growth was then to a large extent driven by the expansion of its unbranded transaction processing businesses, including its brain tree unit. And investors are simply worried that this will dilute returns as the different segments of PayPal have very different fundamental characteristics. PayPal's most recent quarter results, for example, showed that PayPal's branded legacy checkout business only grew at a rate of 6.5% year over year, but its unbranded merchant businesses surged 30%. But this division is likely much less profitable or not profitable at all yet. And in the most recent past, a significant portion of PayPal's profits had been allocated towards acquisitions that didn't create a ton of shareholder value and arguably destroyed shareholder value. Although more recently, the company has actually transitioned to using their profits to buy back more of their own stock. But to be fair, there's also a modest level of 
stock-based compensation that you need to factor in and which we will look at in yeah a second. Okay, I'm trying my best to keep this video relatively short and I'll recommend some other materials for further research towards the end of the video. So let's move on. So are these worries valid? Well, the bull case would certainly highlight that the worries about Fed now are yeah, exaggerated as government solutions typically can't compete with solutions by the private sector. In terms of capital allocation, we have already highlighted that buybacks have become much more important. And during the Q1 call, actually, management said, quote unquote, we continue to expect to generate approximately 5 billion US dollars in free cash flow and to repurchase roughly 4 billion of our shares. So apparently, there will be no more value destructive acquisitions in the near term. Then next, fundamentally, the payments industry is a very attractive industry and enjoys a natural growth tailwind due to inflation. Digital transaction volume is a metric that we have addressed previously. Well, digital transaction volume is projected to grow in the coming years. And to quote Twitter user, mostly borrowed ideas, digital payments enjoy secular tailwind and a core payment processing business is inherently fully inflation hedged since revenue is based on a percentage of total payment volume. Even if PayPal loses market share to competitors, it may still be able to nominally grow their core payment processing revenue for the next five to seven years. PayPal itself with its two-sided network effect and its capital light nature is certainly a very attractive business fundamentally. And on top of that, let me share the elevator pitch of which would partners that they shared in their most recent inv investor letter. Quote unquote, e-commerce industry sales trends have normalized back to their pre-pandemic trend of growth with high margin printed payments keeping track with the industry. Despite this, investors were concerned PayPal's fast growing private labels payment solutions will dilute company returns. However, payments are a very scalable business and we expect the company will be able to manage both private label and branded to achieve attractive returns and double digit growth. Although multiples in the payment industry have compressed, especially after the multi-year process of being added to the financial sector, PayPal's businesses are substantially different enough from traditional spread-based businesses, in addition to having much more compelling growth drivers that PayPal's well below market multiple should revert to its higher historical average. So let's take a look at the valuation multiple that PayPal is trading at right now and traded at in the past. PayPal's enterprise value to revenue multiple stands at 2.7x. The stock is trading at 12 times its next 12 month operating income and roughly 24 times its last 12 month levered free cash flow. But as we highlighted at the beginning of the video, relative valuation, so comparing a stock to its own historical multiple and maybe the multiple of industry peers, doesn't necessarily tell you anything about the intrinsic value of the stock and whether a stock is intrinsically cheap. So let's do a quick valuation exercise here. In fact, I've got a lot of different valuation approaches in my toolkit, eight in total. And as an investor, I think it's always important to understand which approach fits best to the investment that you are looking at. Now, here's my problem with PayPal. I briefly looked at the stock when it was trading close to $60 a share, but I don't have an investment yet because I lack the conviction that PayPal will be a bigger business in 10 years compared to today. I think it might very well be, but personally, I can't say this with a high degree of certainty. PayPal's core business is facing a ton of competition with Apple Pay, Amazon Pay, Google Pay, Stripe, Klarna, Shop Pay, and many more. And I think PayPal could certainly lose market share going forward to some of these extremely well-funded big corporate players. And so I'd certainly not feel comfortable valuing the business with a traditional discounted cash flow model that factors in cash flows over yeah, multiple decades. So let's stick to a shorter term approach, look at the next five years of PayPal's revenue and earnings, and I'll try to keep it super simple here. So PayPal's last 12 months of revenue was 28 billion US dollars. Let's look at how much free cash flow PayPal generated relative to its revenue. And as you can see, historically, PayPal's free cash flow margin was somewhere in the ballpark of 18 to 20%. But that's before stock based compensation. So if you factor in stock based compensation, the free cash flow margin of PayPal historically was more in the range of 13 to 15%, which also looks much more like PayPal's operating income margin, which 
does factor in stock-based compensation. So let's use 15% in our model. And if we assume an annual revenue growth of 10%, which is kind of in line with analysts' expectations, and assume that PayPal trades at 20 times its free cash flow in 2028, well, then investors will enjoy a return of around 10%, which is pretty much the return that the US stock market as a whole has generated historically per year. But watch out if PayPal is now trading more in line with its current multiple 15 times free cash flow, well, then investors expected return drops to just 4%, which will likely underperform the market going forward. Now, as I said, I've tried to keep it super simple here. PayPal may very well trade at higher multiple in five years. We didn't factor in the impact of buybacks yet and PayPal may post higher margins once the yeah less profitable or unprofitable business divisions turn profitable or become more profitable. But overall, I don't think that PayPal is an absolute no-brainer investment here at a share price of $74 a share. And I certainly don't think it's as an attractive an investment as Meta was last year, simply because A, Meta was cheaper and B, I think Matter is fundamentally a much better and more differentiated business. So I'll stick to Buffett's advice here that you don't need to swing at everything in the stock market. The stock market is a no called strike game and I'm only going to swing at the pitches that are super attractive and I don't see that here in PayPal stock yet. It's completely fine for me if other investors will enjoy fabulous gains from PayPal's stock, which might very well be the case going forward, but I simply don't know. And I just acknowledge that I cannot assess and project the competitive dynamics of this payment industry over the next five years, yeah, with a high degree of certainty. Okay, as I said, if you want to learn more about PayPal, I'll link a few resources in the description box down below and make sure to watch some of my other videos going forward to become a smarter investor. Take care.